Okay. All right. So any questions from last week? Uh, Prabhuji, uh, just because you clarified very uh, in detail that we should worship uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, and because uh, if you worship him, uh, we worship both Krishna Radha simultaneously. Correct. Correct. And then even more merciful is Lord Nityanand and then even more merciful than him is as, is our own Shiksha Guru. Sorry, Correct. Diksha Guru. Diksha Correct. Guru. Correct. Correct. So uh, I just wanted to clarify when we offer bhoga to our deities because I have everybody in my uh, in my uh, uh, altar. So who should I pray first to? Well, tell me who you have. I say. Who do you have there? I have Krishna's frame. I have Gornitai. I have Prabhupada also. So what? How does it go? Like when you sure. give one. Hmm. When you serve a plate, do you say everybody's name? Well, so, you say... so you're praying to Srila Prabhupada hmm. to offer to Lord Chit Gornitai and Radha Krishna. So you have two ways of doing that. One is you simply do Pranami Mantra for Srila Prabhupada. Okay. And request him to offer to Gornitai and Radha Krishna. That's one way to do it. Okay. The second way to do it is you you do the Parami Mantra Shila Prabhupada, ask him to please offer and then then uh, um, allow you to assist him. In that case, you can offer your prayers to Lord Chaitanya and Radha Krishna yourself and, and then you move on. So either way is fine. Whatever you feel more comfortable with. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Do you want to mute Okay, okay. We, okay? Pray to, yeah, we pray to Prabhupada, sorry, Prabhupada first, and then we can ask him to allow us to assist us to serve God Nithai and Radha Krishna. Then as you can well. do Parami Mantra for God Nithai and Radha Krishna. Okay. Okay, Prabhuji. Okay. Anji, okay. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. If not, then we'll start with verse 12. Uh, let me. Um, okay. So we go to CC RD Leela 1.12. Okay. So everybody there? Verse number 12. Right, that's where we left off. We finished the number 11. Okay, now did somebody practice the meter? Because I still can't get it. So I'm just going to read. If nobody else is going to volunteer, I'm going to read the way I can. All right. Mahavishnu Jagatkarta Mayaya Yaha Sajat Sajat Yadaha Tasyavatar. Evayam Advait Acharya Ishwaraha. So now we are glorifying, Krishna's Kavadaj is glorifying Advait Acharya. Um, and here we're talking about <clears throat> um, the incarnation of uh, Lord Krishna appears as as uh, Advaita Acharya. Now, Advaita Acharya is a very interesting personality in that he's not an incarnation of one personality, but two personalities. Does anybody know who those two are? Anybody? Sadashiva. Sorry, Sadashiva. Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu correct. Absolutely correct. So, essentially what happened was that Lord Sadashiv Oh, a, a pop quiz. Is Lord Sadashiv what's the tattva of Lord Sadashiv? Shiv tattva? No. That's why I asked. Vish... I'm sorry? Is it Vish tattva, Prabhu? 
सॉरी आई कैन आई कैन हियर व्हाट विष्णु विष्णु तत्व करेक्ट इस विष्णु तत्व सो लॉर्ड सदाशिव वाज फीलिंग सैड अबाउट द स्टेट ऑफ पीपल इन द एज ऑफ कली सो ही स्टार्टेड टू परफॉर्म सीरियस ऑस्टेरिटीज टू महाविष्णु and mahavishnu very soon appeared and they discussed what was going on and so lord sudarshan said you know what i think i'm going to appear and help these people and mahavishnu said you know it was my desire also so why don't we both appear so they both combined to incarnate as advaita acharya so advaita acharya is the combined incarnation of lord sudarshan and mahavishnu okay is that clear Okay, let's go to number three, thirteen. Advaitam Hari Nath Dvaitad Acharyam Bhakti Sans Shamsanath Bhaktavataram Ishantam Advait Acharyam Ashray. He's saying because he is non-different from Hari, so Advait Acharya is non-different from Hari, the Supreme Lord. He is called Advait. So Advaita means no difference, no duality, no two things. It's all one. So Advaita Charya is one with Lord Hari, and because he propagates the cult of devotion by example, he's called an Acharya. The definition of Acharya is the one who teaches by example. Achar means behavior, and Acharya means the one who teaches by his behavior or by example. Okay. so he is propagating the cult of devotion as sadashiv and his because his god is mahavishnu is non different from lord hari so he is the lord of incarnation of the lost devotee so mahavishnu is the lord sadashiv is the devotee of the lord so that's how is talking about the incarnation of two personalities mahavishnu and lord, lord sadashiv and krishna is coming saying i take shelter of this advaita acharya who is the combined incarnation of mahavishnu and lord sadashi now number 14 is is a very very famous verse it's a verse that we should all memorize as part of your mangalacharan prayers whenever we give a class or something we should remember this um so if you want to take the homework homework is to memorize verse 14 पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्त रूप स्वरूप कम भक्ता भक्त नमा भक्त शक्ति कम सो लेट्स टेक ईच वर्ड एट टाइम सो वी नो वॉट यू टॉकिंग अबाउट सो सेंग आम ऑफरिंग ओबेसिस टू द सुप्रीम लॉट कृष्ण हु अपियर्स इन फाइव फीचर्स सो पंच तत्वात्मक कृष्ण मीन्स यू नो आम ऑफरिंग माई ओबेसिस टू Krishna, who's appearing in five features, Panch means five, Tatvatika means features, or or philosophical truths. First one is Bhakti Rupa. That's the devotee. Who's that devotee in this Panch Rupa? Panch Tatva? Anybody? Who's Bhakti Rupa? Shiva. I'm sorry. Shiva. No, that is a trick question. Is he not Narad Muni? <laughs> no. So Krishna is appearing as a bhakta. That's Lord Chaitanya himself. Okay, and I'll come back to your point. I think I know, I know what you're thinking. I'll come back in a minute. Number two, Swarupakam, which means the devotional uh, manifestation, and that's Lord Nityanand. Bhakta Avataram, the incarnation is Advaita Acharya. Okay, bhakta akshyam, pure devotee is Shrinivas. That you are talking about. Namami bhakta shakti kam, and I offer my verses to all of them, and to bhakta shakti kam. Who's bhakta shakti kam? That's Gadadhar Pandit because he's the incarnation of Radha Rani. So actually, Gadadhar Pandit is the incarnation of Radha Rani in the mood of Chandravali. Now you say, well, what does that mean, and why is that? Why do I care? Well. we care because radha rani was known as um vamapanthi which means leftist which means 
she will chastise Krishna. She'll get angry with Krishna. She will uh, um, show her anger in all, all different ways. And uh, she pretend not to care for Krishna. She'll make Krishna run after her. Chandravali, on the other hand, other hand, was always very, she's known as rightist, which means she was very submissive all the time. And uh, whatever Krishna did, she just simply accepted it. If he came, great. If he left, great. She would not complain. She would not cry. She never got angry with him. So very submissive mood. So Gadadha Pandit was Radha Rani, but in a very submissive mood, no matter what Lord Chaitanya did, and there are many pastimes when as uh, uh, students in the same class, Lord Chaitanya would tease him, bother him, harass him, and Gadadha Pandit never complained because he was in the mood of Chandravali. So that's Bhakta Shakti Kam. Now, Sakshi Suruba, I'm going to stop and see if you're clear or you have any questions or comments on this. Got it, Prabhuji. I was actually answering the other part. Yes, correct. Correct. Okay, anybody else? Are you okay? Because then the whole thing will change very soon. Now, we're going to do verses 15, 16, and 17. Sorry, Huh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, so there's one mention of devotee and another pure devotee. Well, they're obviously both pure devotee, but the idea was Krishna's appearing as a devotee. Obviously, he'll be pure devotee. And then it is, you know, incarnation of God is pure devotee. Yeah. Okay. Is that clear? Nothing, yeah. yeah, nothing deeper, right? That's all. No, nothing deeper. No, nothing deeper. Okay, hey, Sorry, Mataji. Sorry, Mataji. You please repeat. Aap bolo. Okay, everybody's from Lucknow, obviously. Pahle aap. Okay, okay. Prabhu, I'll question, Prabhu. Like, I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but huh. it said that Shrimati Radharani and Chandravali, they were like competitors to each other. So if like Chandravali was submissive, then how the competition was like how well, they were like competition. competition was caused by Krishna. So Chandavali would desire him, but Shiva did anything, you know, to get Krishna away from her. As a matter of fact, there's a story where um Radharani is missing Krishna a lot, and one day it appears she's going to leave her body. So everybody's crying. And Chandavali comes in. And she declares, she said, I wanted everybody to know that whenever Krishna came to me, he was actually looking for Radharani. He would look at my face and say, you're not Radharani. And he would leave. And, and you know, obviously I never complained. So her point was that Radharani is very dear and very important to Krishna. And she was just giving that importance to Radharani as she was lying there uh, uh, totally unconscious. So again, my point is that Krishna basically went to Chandavali only to make Radharani jealous, which was transcendental jealousy, not our material jealousy. But just to do that, because that will increase the pleasure she would feel after he comes back, returns from her, from Chandavali, back to Radharani. That was the only reason they were doing that. And Chandavali said, he never came to me for me, but he would come to me, so Radha will be jealous. Okay, okay, Prabhuji, thank Does you. Does that answer your question? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you. Okay, Saki Surupa, thank you for your patience. No, no, Prabhu. Sorry, Mataji. Prabhuji, I was just reconfirming that in the Panch Tattva Pranami Mantra, it talks about the Lord, the Lord taking uh, Avatar as Bhakta, and then it also talks about the uh, devotee of the Lord so Taking basically, it. they are talking about six. Everybody understands the word tattwa. What's the word tattwa mean? Just so, because that might be part of the confusion. Who knows the meaning of the word tattwa? Well, I'm guessing portion. I'm sorry, say again. Is it portion? No, no, yeah. not at all. The real truth, the philosophy behind it. Yes, the philosophical truth. Thank you. Yeah. The word tattva means philosophical truth. So Krishna is appearing in five different philosophical truths. One is himself coming 
as devotee. So it's Krishna. It's Krishna Tattva, but as devotee. Second, he's coming as his own expansion. That's Lord. Who's the expansion? Lord. 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 Correct. Lord. Then he's incarnating as he's incarnating Advaita as Charya. Huh? Advaita Charya Prabhuji. Correct. So now you got Bhakta Rupa, Lord Chaitanya. You got Sarupa come, the expansion. Lord yes, Dityanan. Bhaktavataram as yeah. uh, Lord Advaita Charya is the avatar. And then he says Bhaktakhyam is a devotee. Yeah. Akhyam is known as Bhaktakhyam. That's Shiva's Pandit. And he says Namami offer my verses to whom? To all of them. And it ends with Bhakti Shaktikam. Shakti Radharani. Radharani is appearing as a devotee in the form of Godatha Pandit, who's there in the mood of Chandravali. So that's Bhakta Shaktikam. Is that clear? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, everybody else? Yeah. Prabhu, who was Chandravali? Chandravali actually was a cousin of Radharani, her father's brother's daughter. Very, very beautiful. But it is said that actually Chandravali, when I, the story about Chandravali coming and declaring, she said, my name is Chandravali, but actually Radharani is Chandravali. Because Chandravali means a row of moons. She says, I'm one moon, but with the name of Chandravali. But in reality, Radharani is Chandravali. A row of moons. Okay. Why did she appear in that mood? Because it's just a matter of the meaning of the no no to increase the, the enhance the pleasure of Krishna. So he's got a leftist and he's got a rightist, right wing, left wing. So he's enjoying both ways. Everybody appears to enhance the pleasure of Krishna in different ways. Why did she appear in the in that mood, in Chandravali mood? Okay, so I'll call her and find out. As, as I said, oh. he's <laughs> to give him pleasure from a different perspective. So you have right wing pleasure, you have left wing pleasure. Somebody's getting angry with him, he's getting the pleasure. Somebody's always submissive, he's getting the pleasure. Just to complete the pleasure. Okay, okay Prabhu. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so that's now. Now, what's happening is that Krishna's Kavya is going to switch gears. And in verses 15, 16, and 17, he's offering obeisances to Krishna directly. But Krishna, in the form of the three most prominent temples there at the time, at that time. It's Radha Madan Mohanji, Radha Govindji, and Radha Gopinaji. So they were the three principal, principal deities in Vrindavan at that time. Now, Prabhupada talks about seven, excuse me, seven principal deities in Vrindavan. Anybody knows who they are? Three obviously here. Who are the other four? Any idea? Think six Goswamis. What's the temple for Gopal Bhatta Goswami? Radha Ramashi. Correct. What's the deity for Jiva Goswami? Radha Damodar. Right? Who's the deity for uh, Oh my God. Uh, my name just scripts me. Anyway, Gokulanandji. The devotee's name just scripts me completely. Okay. So, so you have those seven um, temples that uh, are very prominent even today. And uh, I don't think we need to really 
get into the details of that. Um, yeah, so anyway, so come back to number 15. So in 15th what let's let's read it first. Jayatam Surto Pangor Mam Pamangor Mam Mandamater Gati Matasar Vasipadam Bhojo Radha Madan Mohana Translation Glory to the all merciful Radha and Madan Mohan. I am lame and ill advised, yet they are my directors. And the lotus feet are everything to me. So, again, um, Krishna Das Kaviraj starts by offering obeisances first to Radha Madan Mohanji. Radha Madan Mohanji is known as Sambandh Vigra. What does Sambandh mean? Anybody? Relationship. Relationship. So, it's known as the Relationship Vigra. So, in the execution of Krishna consciousness, our first business is to know ourselves, us, Krishna, and our relationship with Krishna. So, three things are important in our Krishna consciousness. Who are we? Who is Krishna? And what is our relationship with Krishna? And that's all about Sambandh Vigraha. So, the better we know Krishna, the better we will know ourselves. The better we know ourselves and Krishna, the better we will know our relationship with Krishna. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, Prabhuji. And, and what is that relationship we're talking about? Lord Chaitanya says, Jivel Swarup Hoy, Krishnair Nitidas. In other words, our relationship is that we are the eternal servants of Krishna. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. We are part and parcel of Krishna. So, Mame Vansho Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatu. We are that part and parcel of Krishna. Krishna is Sarva Loka Maheshwar. Bhakta Ram Yagita Prasam Sarva Loka Maheshwar. Isha Vasa Jagat Sarvam. Matta Am Sarvas Prabhu Matta Sarvam Prabhu. All those verses. That describing Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. We are his eternal servants. And, and because to have anything to do with Krishna, <clears throat> we must learn what this relationship is. So Krishna's Kaviraj is starting with the Vigraha and the prayers to Radha Madan Mohanji so that we can learn this relationship. So the, this relationship between us and Krishna can be learned by worshipping the Madan Mohan Vigraha. So therefore, Krishna Das Kaviraj is first establishing his relationship with Krishna. Now, very interesting. He says, I am lame. What does lame mean? I can barely walk. Maybe I'm missing a leg or whatever. I can barely walk. What does that mean? It means... I don't have strength to do anything on my own. Narutandas Thakur sings, Ekaki um, Amar Nahi Payabal. I am alone. I do not have the strength to worship you. So I need help. And then Krishna's Kavra says, It's worse than that. I am also Mandamate, which means I'm foolish. So not only I don't have any strength, any ability on my own to do anything, I'm also foolish. So I need help. Somebody has to pick me up. Somebody has to guide me how to walk, where to walk, which way to walk. So saying, Madan Mohanji is my directors. The lotus feet are everything to me. In other words, Krishna Skavra is saying, my dear Shishi Radha Madan Mohanji, I'm taking shelter of your lotus feet so that I may make progress on the path of devotional service in Krishna consciousness. Is that clear? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Let's move on to the 16th verse. It says, Divyad Gandharana Kalpa 
द्रुमाध श्रीमद रत्नागर सिंहासन स्थ श्रीमद राधा शील गोविंद देव प्रेष्ठा लिभि सेव्यमानो स्मरामी in the temple of jewels in vrindavan underneath a desire tree shishi radha govind served by their most confidential associates sit upon an effulgent throne i offer my humble obeisances to them so now having established the relationship with krishna through the obeisances to the sambandh vigraha radha madan mohan ji krishna comes now offering obeisances to the what you would call functional deity which is lord govinda in the introduction to this chetan chetamrit shila pahupat says that govinda deity is called functional deity because they show us how to serve so you got the relationship you figured out that your swarupa is to serve your eternal servant but that doesn't tell you how to serve so govind ji is telling you how to serve that functional deity it has it's telling us how to function how to serve them so again madan mohan ji is establishing simply that we are his eternal servants govind ji is actually accepting the service therefore he tells us how to serve them okay so in this verse krishna's kavita is saying radha and krishna are seated beneath a kalpataru wish fulfilling tree in vandavan on a throne decorated with valuable jewels krishna's gopi friends is serving him and radharani by singing dancing offering betel nuts refreshments decorating their bodies you know with flowers with gopi darts and all those kind of things you know and the swing festival is very famous you know that happens a lot of times especially in the time of savan which is uh, just before the rainy season or uh, actually sometimes actually during the rainy season and uh, we have jhulan yatra coming up um, i think in a couple of weeks is coming up and so anyway so they do that to cool off the bodies of uh, radha and krishna and that's how they're serving serving uh, radha krishna so here the point is being made is the deity of govind ji is the abhidey deity which is the process that teaches how to serve the, the process of serving which is process of devotional service okay so before i move to 17 verse number 17 any questions okay all right then 17 shiman ras rasarambhi वंशी वट तट स्थित कर्षण वेणु स्वन गोपीर गोपीनाथ श्रेयस्त नी श्रीला गोपीनाथ हु ओरिजिनेटेड द ट्रांसिडेंटल मेलो ऑफ द रास्टम्स स्टैंड ऑन द शोर इन इन वंशी वट एंड अट्रैक्स द अटेंशन ऑफ द काउ हो डैम्स विद द साउंड ऑफ इज सेलिब्रेटेड फ्लूट मे दे ऑल कन्फर अपॉन अस देर बेनोडिक्शन so here actually um krishna das kavira is asking the lord to bless us the readers of this book and is referring to the deity of gopinath nath means the master gopi means the uh nath also means proprietor by the way so master and proprietor of whom gopis gopis are the servants the cowher damsels of of vrindavan were there to serve krishna in every way and he says when krishna plays his flute all the gopis are attracted to that sound and they leave their household duties their homes and they come running to him and he dances with them that's the dance that's known as ras leela and it's the most elevated of all vrindavan pastimes so um so that's what's happening there and he's saying may they confer their benedictions upon all of us 
So basically, the idea is that just like Krishna's flute attracted the gopis by sweet sound, may that sound also attract our mind so that we may serve Radha and Krishna together. Now, these three deities are very important in many other ways. Um, actually, it was Vajranath, who was great-grandson of Lord Krishna. He decided to, to uh, carve a deity of Krishna that he could serve. So he had Vishwakarma, carved a deity, and then he wanted to make sure that it looked exactly like Lord Krishna. So he called Mother Uttara. Who was Uttara? Anybody? The mother of Abhimanyu. Correct. Mother of Abhimanyu. So she was, she had seen Krishna obviously many times. So he called her and said, my dear mother, can you please tell me if this deity looks like Lord Krishna? She looked at it and said, only his lotus feet look like Krishna. She said, okay, then I need another deity. And this deity was named Madan Mohanji. So the Vishwakarma was asked to make another car, another deity. He did. He called Uttara Mataji again and said, does, it, does this look like Krishna? And she said, only the chest looks like him. So he said, okay, then I need another deity made. And he, he named this deity Gopinath, Radha Gopinath. So the third deity was made. And he said, okay, well, what about this one? And she said, only the face looks like Krishna. So that was Govindji. So then this whole bunch of story, how they were in Vrindavan being worshipped and then the Muslims attacked and they were taken away. And somehow Madan Mohanji ended up in a place called Karoli, which is between Vrindavan and uh, Jaipur. And the other two deities, Govindji and Gopinathji, ended up in Jaipur. So it is said that the best way to take their darshan is that you first travel to Karoli, take the darshan of Madan Mohanji, then you rush to Jaipur, take darshan of Gopinathji and Govindji. Then it's completed. That you've seen the entire vigraha of Krishna in one day. So that's a side story about these three deities because they're no longer in Vrindavan. What you have in Vrindavan today, known as Govindji, Gopinathji, and, and Madan Mohanji, is the Pratibhima Murthy, not the original. Okay? Any questions or comments on that? All right, let's move on then. Let's go to number 18. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityanan Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrindha So glory to Shri Chaitanya Nityanan, glory to Advaita Chandra and glory to all the devotees of Shri Gaur, which is Lord Chaitanya. So interesting because immediately after, it talks about the three, three deities, Govaji, Madan Mohanji and Gopinathji. So it is a custom to pray to the Panchatattvas before praying to Krishna. So he's, he's doing that. And now, text number 19, he says, Eitin Thakur Gaudiyake Kariya Chen. I'm sorry, I don't know the meter. Eitin Thakur Gaudiyake Kariya Chen Atma Saat. Etinere Charana Bandhon. Tine Mor Nath. These three deities of Vrindavan, Madan Mohan, Govind, and Gopinath, have absorbed the heart and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, followers of Lord Chaitanya. I worship their lotus feet, for they are the lords of my heart. Okay. So let's, let's read the purport. Unless somebody wants to read it. Anybody wants to read? I can read it, Prabhuji. Read the first paragraph, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, Parpat, the author of Shri Chaitanya Charitram offers his respectful obeisances into, into the, unto the three deities of Vrindavan named Shri Radha Madan Mohan, 
श्री राधा गोविंद देव जी एंड श्री राधा गोपीनाथ जी दीज थ्री डेटीज आर द लाइफ इन द सोल ऑफ बंगाली वैष्णवाज आर गौर वैष्णवाज हु हैव द नेचुरल एप्टीट्यूड फॉर रिजाइडिंग इन वृंदावन द गौर वैष्णवा हु फॉलो स्ट्रिक्टली इन द लाइन ऑफ श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु वर्शिप द डेविनिटी ऑफ चैंटिंग रेजिडेंशियल साउंड meant to develop a sense of one's transcendental relationship with the supreme lord a reciprocation of mellows rasas of mutual affection and ultimately the achievement of desire success and loving service these three deities are worshiped in three different stages of one's development the, the followers of chaitanya mahaprabhu sakrup palsli follow these principles of approach thank you prabhu okay so the point being made here is that those of us or the followers of lord chaitanya are we all followers of lord chaitanya here yes prabhu ji we are okay good so we are following the the um process that lord chaitanya gave to us to serve to worship radha krishna and saying is what is the process that lord chaitanya gave by the way what is the process of devotional service that lord chaitanya gave to us hari naam sankirtan hari naam sankirtan correct so we use that for three purposes first is to establish the relationship between us and krishna second is to understand and execute the process of devotional service and third is to actually obtain the result and what's the result ultimate goal to achieve krishna prem achieve krishna vilasata shunya yeah so same thing to achieve krishna prem so the deity of krishna prem is gopinath ji the deity of establishing the relationship is madan mohan ji and the process the dt of the process is govindji okay so lord chaitanya has given us the process for uh all these three and it's the stages that we go through like right now we are trying to establish that relationship that where the reciprocity is happening okay all right let's read the next paragraph somebody i can wait Gaudiya Vaishnavas, yeah. Okay. Gaudiya Vaishnavas perceive the ultimate objective in Vedic hymns, composed of eighteen transcendental letters that adore Krishna as Madana Mohan, Govinda, and Gopijana Balaba. Madana Mohan is he who charms Cupid, the god of love. Govinda is he who pleases the senses and the cows, and Gopi Jana Vallabha is the transcendental lover of the gopis. Krishna himself is called Madana Mohan, Govinda, Go Gopi Jana Vallabha, and countless other names as he plays in his different pastimes with his devotees. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so, it's basically, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's talking about us, Gaudiya Vaishnavas. perceive the ultimate objective which is um the love of krishna and we start the worship again from the lotus feet of the lord which is the worship of madan mohan ji move on to the chest which is gopi vallabh or gopinath and then to the face which is guru ji and then explaining the meanings of the words madan mohan is the one who madan is the cupid Madan Mohan is the one who chants even the cupid. Govinda is the one who gives pleasure to the to the senses and to the cows. And Gopijan Vallabh is the one who is very dear to the gopis. All three are Krishna, and all three get their names as per their pastimes. And it's being it's mentioned here that the many other names of Krishna, billions and trillions of names, but they all reflect either his quality. is form or his past times okay okay next paragraph please somebody prabhu ji i have a question here yeah go ahead uh, 
Uh, what does that mean, uh, composed of 18 transcendental letters? Yeah, I'm trying to remember um, which Vedic hymn is referring to. Um, I'll have to get back to you, but I don't know a fan. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. 18 transcendental. There's, there's 12 letters, there's 16 letters, there's 18 letters. And I was getting mixed up which one is which. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva and Hare Krishna Mahamantra and I'll get back to you, Prabhu. Okay, okay, no problem, Prabhu. Sure. Somebody else was asking. Okay. I was asking, Prabhu, but it was the same question. So. Okay. All right, I should have caught it when I was reading this before. Okay, third paragraph, please. <laughs> The three deities, Madan Mohan, Govinda, and Gopi Janavallabha, have their specific qualities. Worship of Madan Mohan is on the platform of re establishing a relationship with the personality of Godhead. In this material world, we are presently in utter ignorance of our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. Just a second. Sorry. Okay. In this material world, we are presently in utter ignorance of our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. Pango refers to one who cannot move independently by his own strength. And, mat and Mandamate is one who is less intelligent because he is too absorbed in materialistic activities. It is best for such person not to aspire for success in fruitive activities or mental speculations, but instead simply to surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The perfection of life is simply to surrender to the Supreme. In the beginning of our spiritual life, we must therefore worship Madan Mohan so that he may attract us and nullify our attachments for materialistic sense gratification. This relationship with Madan Mohan is necessary for neophyte devotees. When one wishes to render service to the Lord with strong attachment, one worship Govinda on the platform of transcendental service. Govinda is the reservoir of all pleasures. When the biggest grace of Krishna and the devotees, one reaches perfection in devotional service, he can appreciate Krishna as Gopi Janavallabha, the pleasure deities of the damsel of Braja. Yeah. So this is the three stages that was referred to in a previous paragraph. And his uh, Krishna's Kavras is actually well, explaining that uh, we serve Madan Mohanji to establish that relationship with him that we had forgotten. So you may recall Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text 73, says, Nashto Moha Smriti Labdhva, Tat Prasadat Maya Achuta. He's saying, Now my memory is back. So what is that memory? That memory is that relationship, who I am, who you are, and what is my relationship with you, that I am your eternal servant. So by serving, serving Madan Mohanji, we can reestablish that forgotten relationship. Now you may recall in text 15, two words were used, Pangormam and Mandamate. And I explained that already, that Pangormam is, I'm lame, I can barely do anything on my own, and so I need help. And Mandamate means I'm foolish in that I'm more attracted to material things than you, my dear Lord Krishna. And therefore I need help. And uh, so by worshipping Madan Mohanji, that relationship is established, the help is obtained, and then we don't, don't uh, feel the necessity anymore of any kind of uh, um, mental speculation of fruitive activity. So we get past all that, which means now we're getting to pure devotional service. And then we are serving Govindji to having to establish that relationship. Now we're serving Govindji with very strong attachment because the material attachments are gone. Okay? And, and then that is when we start to feel, feel some of the ecstasy because the purity increases and Govinda itself means giver of ecstasy. So we start to feel that. And at, this, at that time, 
that we are getting close to or actually reaching the perfection of a devotional service, which is obtaining the love of Krishna. That then we are serving Gopi Janval Lapa Gopinach. So it's not just physical vigrahas, it's the mood also that's important. So, so you may be serving you know, your deity at home. But actually going through these three stages, where in the sense of the mood, you are first worshipping Madan Mohanji, then graduating to Govindji, then graduating to Gopi Balabji. Okay? Babaji, I have a question here. Huh? What is the practical way for a new five devotee to start worshipping worshiping the Radha Madan Mohanji? Like we have deities in our home, which is not Radha Madan Mohanji. Even when we go to our temple, we don't have Radha Madan Mohanji in our temple. Uh, so what is the practical way of uh, serving for a new five devotee to serving uh, like a Radha Madan Mohanji? Yeah, so that's, that's exactly what I was saying a minute ago. That is more the mood. Because remember, they're all non-different. There's no difference as such between Radha Madan Mohanji, Govindji, Gopinaji, and other names, but they're all Krishna. So okay. it's not that they're different Krishnas. They're all one Krishna. Okay. But the mood is different. So can you explain elaborately a little more, Prabhuji, like when we start, like what we should think of if we start worship like a new way yes. devotee? Yes. Yeah, good question. So basically our, and this is exactly what he's saying here. First should be I have no ability on our own. Ekaki Amar Nahi Paibal. I cannot do anything on my own. So I need guidance. I need directions. I need instructions. Whether you come in as a guru or whatever, but I need your help, my dear Krishna. Remind me of that relationship. Remind me who I am. Remind me I'm a spirit soul. I'm not this body. Remind me I'm your eternal servant. Remind me you are my boss. Remind me you are my provider. Remind me you are my sustainer. All those remembrances, I'm praying. That mood is Madan Mohanji. Okay, then how we progress, Prabhuji, from Radha Madan Mohanji? Uh, then... I'm coming to that. Let me finish. So I'm okay. coming to that. So once you have become comfortable in that, in that you're reasonably convinced you're not about this body, you are spirit soul. It is never convinced that you are a servant, not a master, not an enjoyer, not a proprietor, any of those things. So again, your consciousness is becoming more and more purified. So remember um, the verse of Nectar Devotion, we said, Sarvapadi Minir Muktam Tat Paratve Nirmalam Rishike Rishike Sevanam Bhakti Uchite. Remember that verse, anybody? Not me, Prabhuji. Okay. Anyway, so that's a very famous verse. And it's saying that when we serve Krishna with our purified senses, then we're actually doing bhakti. And that's what we're saying here. When we've gone through all that and come to the point where, no, no, now I remember who I am, I'm a spirit soul. Now I remember who Krishna is. Now I remember what my relationship with Krishna is. Then your senses are purified. Now you're serving Govindji. Uh, could you please uh, tell me the words again, Prabhuji? The text. Sarva Padi Vinir Mukta. Okay. Okay, it's just before Anya Vlashra Shunyam. Okay, Prabhuji, thank you. Okay, so now you're performing pure devotional service. And when you do that, then you automatically come to the conclusion of that process, which is the obtaining of Krishna Prem. Then you're serving Gopinachi. So we go to our temple in downtown Toronto and we serve quote unquote Radha Gopinachi. But actually, we are so bad, we're not serving Radha Krishna at all. Forget Bhadra Mohanji. We're not serving any Krishna, any Radha. Who are we serving? Anybody? Lakshmi Narayan. Lakshmi Narayan. Very good, Radha. You're serving Lakshmi Narayan. That's how our service is being accepted because it's serving in a mood of awe and reverence. Okay? Prabhupada, can I ask a question? Sure, Raghav, go ahead. How do you, like, so 
when you're in any of the stages, uh, like the first stage, uh, then is it that like your any circumstances or any uh, like any help that you receive in satisfying that stage is that like a manifestation of like Radha Madan Mohan or like let's say like you're at the first stage when you are in the process of purifying senses is you can think of it as like his blessings or his, or that form of Krishna's blessing versus this does that make sense or, or not? Uh, uh, this is a question makes sense. Sorry, versus what? Like, okay, let's say you're in the first stage, right? When you're trying to purify the senses to at the Radha Mother Mohan level. So is that is that is that like any you you any uh, you're and you do kirtan you you do chanting you do whatever th those are being accepted by Krishna in the form of Radha Madan Mohan is is that what's happening or or is it or my misunderstanding like 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 when you're doing any service and mm -hmm. and you're at the complete bottom level is it that the service is being accepted by Krishna in the form of Radha Madan Mohan no that's what I'm versus... saying at the stage we are at. Because we still have not gotten out of the mode where we're serving him in the mood of awe and reverence. Like we're not informal at all. We are standing there with folded hands. Saying, Tumiyo Mata Pita Tumiyo, Tumiyo Bandhu Sakha Tumiyo. You are everything. You are my master. So right now our relationship is you are the big master. You are the big lord. I'm an insignificant servant. So we're not even at Radha Madan Mohan level yet. So we are at Lakshmi Narayan level. So Krishna is accepting it in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. That's where we are today. So that means we're below neophyte as well. No, neophyte. We, I mean, well, we were neophytes. Neophytes means a beginner. So we are neophytes. Yes, that is correct. By the way, there's nothing to feel bad about. It's a very high position to be a neophyte devotee. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Very. I mean, let me explain this. There are 8.4 million different species. 8 million of those are non-human species. So it's rare to get a human birth to start with. When you get human birth, then the vast majority, like 99.9%, .9 are at animal level. Eating, mating, defending, and sleeping. That's all they do. So 0.1% maybe reaches above and gets to the Varnashram level, which is called human level. Out of that 0.1%, hardly 0.1% becomes a uh, aspiring devotee. I'm sorry, uh, Aztec, which was religious. So religiosity, um, uh, economic development, uh, desiring of Satisfaction of desires and desiring of mukti, liberation. That's the next stage. Then you come to the point where you say, no, 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 I don't want all that. I want to serve Krishna. That's your neophyte devotee. That's how high it is. Then it gets higher in terms of progressing from that point, offensive stage to cleansing stage to bhava stage, all those kind of things. To get to that stage, Prabhuji, it takes many, many births to get, like it says, Pahunam Janmane Ante Gyanavan Vai Parpadante Vasudev Saram Mecho Mahatma Sudhanavai. Even like a new five devotee, Krishna called him uh, Mahatma, even who surrendered to him, not surrendered to him, who gets like uh, uh, the shelter of his lotus feet uh, through that uh, disciplic, bona fide uh, spiritual master, Prabhuji. Right. So, yeah, it's very hard. Very, very hard. But if you keep at it, one day you'll get there. If you give up, you won't. Okay? Yes, probably. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the next paragraph, please. Another person? I can read, probably. Please go ahead. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained this mode of devotional service in three stages mm -hmm. and therefore 
these worshipable deities were installed in Vrindavan by different Goswamis. They are very dear to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas there who visit the temple at least once a day. Beside the temple of these three deities, many other temples have been established in Vrindavan, such as the temple of Radha Damodar of the Jiva Goswami, the temple of Sham Sundra of Sham of Sham Shamananda Goswami, the temple of Golukananda of Golokanath Goswami, okay. and the temple of Radha Raman of Gopal Bhatt Goswami. There are seven principal temples over 400 years old that are the most important of the 5,000 temples now existing in Vrindavan. Right. Okay, so we already discussed this one, so we just move on. Move on. Next no, let somebody else do it. By the way, who was reading it? I couldn't tell. Should I continue? I'm sorry? Should I continue, Prabhuji? No, let somebody else do it. I can, I can. Uh, Go ahead, Gautam. Gaudiya indicates the part of India between the southern side of the Himalayan mountains and the northern part of the Vindhya hills, which is called Aryavarta or the land of the Aryans. This portion of India is divided into five parts or provinces. Pancha Gaudadesha, Saraswata, Kashmir and Punjab, Kanya Kubja, Uttar Pradesh, including the modern city of Lucknow, Madhya Gauda, Madhya Pradesh, Maithila, <coughs> Bihar and part of Bengal, and Utkala, part of Bengal and the whole of Orissa. Bengal is sometimes called Gaudadesha, partly because it forms a portion of Maithila and partly because the capital of Hindu king Raja Lakshmana Sena, Sena was known as Gauda. This old capital later became to be known as Gaudapura and gradually Mayapur. Right. So basically, it's telling you geographically what Gaudiya means. And it's the Bengal and some areas around it, including some UP, etc. Okay. Um, go ahead, please, the next paragraph, somebody. The devotees of Arissa are called Udayas. The devotees of Bengal are called Gaudias, and the devotees of southern India are known as Dravida devotees. As there are five provinces in Aryavart, so Dakshinatya, southern India, is also divided into five provinces, which are called Pancha Dravida. The four Vaishnavacharyas, who are the great authorities of the four Vaishnava disciplic successions, are as as well as Sripada Sankracharya of the Mayavadi school, appeared in the Pancha Dravida provinces. Among the four Vaishnava Acharyas, who are all accepted by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Sri Ramanuja Acharya appeared in the southern part of Andhra Pradesh at Mahabhutapuri. Sri Madhva Acharya appeared at Pajakam near Vimanagri in the district of Mangalore. Sri Vishnu Swami appeared at Pandya, and Sri Nimbaka appeared at Manjara Patana in the extreme south. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Okay, so again, they're talking about the four Vaishnava Sampradayas, and their heads where they appeared. Okay, so we'll just move on to the next paragraph, please. Somebody else can read the next paragraph? <laughs> Can I read it, Prabhuji, again? No, still somebody else who somebody new. I will read, Prabhuji. I will okay, read. Prabhu, go ahead. Yeah. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the chain of disciplic succession from Madhvacharya, but the Vaishnava in his line do not accept the Tattva Vadis, who also claim to belong to Madhva Sampradaya, to distinguish themselves clearly from the Tattuvadi branch of Maya, Maya, Madhu, Madhuva descendants, the Vaishnavas of Bengal prefer to call themselves Gaudiya Vaishnava. Sri Madhvacharya is also known as Sri Gaudiya Purnamanand and therefore name Madhva Gaudiya Sampradha is quite suitable for the disciplic succession of the Gaudiya Vaishnava. Our spiritual master, Om Vishnupada, 
विष्णुपद श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज एक्सेप्टेड इनिशिएशन इन द मधुआ गौड़िया संप्रदाय थैंक यू प्रभु सो सम सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन दिस पैराग्राफ फर्स्ट इज लुक एट द लास्ट लाइन our spiritual master is propad writing it so our spiritual master who is that not bhakti sadh sarasvati maharaj he doesn't say our spiritual master bhakti sadh sarasvati maharaj om vishnu pad shri mad bhakti siddhan sarasvati goswami maharaj that's the proper etiquette to address our guru we don't just take his name and move on no this is the proper etiquette Om Vishnu Pad Shri Mad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Mahat Guru Swami Maharaj. So whatever Guru's name is, we do that, or at least say His Holiness or Param Pujya, some address like that, not just the name, just as the etiquette. So that's one point I wanted to make. Now let's move on, move back to the beginning of the paragraph. So we are known as Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya. Actually, we are known as Brahma. Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. So let's talk about how we get that name, how that works. Okay. Also, there's a reference here of um, the first line says Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the chain of disciplic succession from Madhva Acharya, but the Vaishnavas in his line, which is Madhva Acharya line, do not accept the Tatvadis. Who also claim to belong to Madhva Sampradaya. So, who are these Tattvadis? So, I will talk a little bit about that, and because it's important to understand. So, Tattvadis are those people who don't perform pure devotional service because their service is mixed with Gyan and Karma. So, remember again that verse from the Tev Devotion: "Anya Abhilashita Shunyam Gyan Karmadi Anavrutam." Ankulian Krishna Shilnam Bhakti Uttama. So pure devotional service is that which is devoid of any material desires, fruitive activities, and gyan. So gyan and karma, the fruitive activities and gyan is devoid of that. That's so tattvadis who perform devotional service mixed with gyan and karma are not pure devotees. So Gauriya Vaishnava Sampradaya they reject that. Although they are in the disciplic succession of Madhva Charya, so that's first thing. The um, other problem with Tatvadis is that they have a desire for elevation to a higher standard of life, and they desire to merge in the existence of the absolute truth. they stick to the principle of varnashram but the fruity activity is very important to them mukti is very important to them and mukti by the way is another material desire so therefore they're not free from all the material desires ani ablashta shunya was saying that they're not free of gyan and karma gyan karma the navrutam therefore they're not pure devotees they simply engage in the service of the lord but lord chaitanya said but at least you accept that the lord has a transcendental form therefore you're better than mayavadis but that's the extent of appreciation of tatvadis even though they come from the same the disciplic succession of the same acharya so that's one point now who was the grand uh, 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 spiritual master of lord chaitanya anybody ishwar puri prabhu ji no grand spiritual master the spiritual master of the spiritual master madhavendra pur correct madhavendra pur so lord chaitanya says that madhavendra puri accepted madhvacharya as his you know preceding acharya basically madhavendra puri belonged to madhvacharya sampradaya but it was mainly because Madhavacharya Sampradaya accepted the transcendental form of the Lord, and some of the followers of Madhavacharya, sorry, some of the followers of uh, Madhavacharya, 
uh, what am I going to say? They they were doing all this that we were just talking about, but they did not agree that the Lord does not have transcendental form. Therefore, Madhvacharya named them Tattvavadis. So that's basically who Tattvavadis are. I don't know if I explained that well. So basically, I'm trying to explain. I talked about who Tattvavadis are. I'm trying to explain why Madhvacharya did not try to object to them claiming to belong to his sampraday. He basically said, at least you agree that Krishna has a form. Now, something very interesting. That Tattuvadis don't believe that Lord Brahma was ever in illusion. Because they say, wait a minute, we are also Brahma Madhva Sampradaya. So our original guru is Brahma. So how can original guru, the leader of the Sampradaya, come under illusion? So therefore, they actually never talk about Brahma Vibhavan Leela, which is recorded in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto. Even Madhvacharya never commented on that portion of Srimad Bhagavatam. The Brahma Vimon Lila, because he said, How can my guru, the, the original guru, come under illusion? That's not possible. So it is very confusing that Madhvendra Puri, who is the grand spiritual master Lord Chaitanya, was one of the Acharya of the Tatwadis, Tatwadi disciplic succession. But he moved on a little bit, moved away a little bit, that by saying that. The ultimate goal of any transcendental activity is the attainment of pure devotional service or love of God. So that's what distinguished him from the Tattvavadis, even though they were his followers. Oh, sorry, they were his god brothers or cousins or uncles, whatever you want to call it. So, so those of us, Vaishnavas, who belong to Gaudiya Sampradaya. following the disciplic succession of Lord Chaitanya are different or distinct from Tattvavadis. Although we belong to the same Sampradaya. And that's why it gets very confusing. So therefore, we, the followers of Lord Chaitanya, are known as Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya or Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya as opposed to just Madhva Sampradaya. Okay, now how much did I confuse you all? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Who speaking? Prabhuji, last year oh, I was in uh, yeah, okay. the temple in Vrindavan. Huh. Over there, they have clearly put up the board that Gaudiya Vaishnav is not part of uh, uh, Madhvacharya Parampara. And when I went in April again, now they say they recognize Gaudiya Vaishnav Parampara as part of their Parampara. So I got confused. <laughs> Somebody woke up. Yeah. So, so, I, so there is, you know, typically when we talk about sampradaya or disciplic succession, we mean hundred uh, percent compliance. But this is one area where we ourselves are not hundred percent compliant with Madhvacharya and his teachings, nor the Tattvavadis. We take slightly different stance on some things. And Lachatanya, as I said, Lachatanya said to the Tatvadis, only thing I like about you is that you at least you believe Krishna has a form. Outside of that, we don't agree on anything. They're into fruitive activities, they're into mental concoctions, they're into mental speculation. They want to go to the, you know, Swarga Loka, they want Mukti. We don't want any of that. So there's a big difference. But somehow we still call ourselves belonging to the Sampadaya. I don't understand it to be honest with you, but that's how it is. So what you saw there, yeah, they, clearly they also don't believe, but seeing the success of Prabhupada's movement, a lot of people in Vrindavan are now calling this part of the, the same group. Uh, if you go to the stores now, almost all stores in Loi Bazaar have big picture of Prabhupada. But the funny they recognize that is Prabhupada who's bringing the business to them. So same thing with all the other groups. 
the thinking, oh, if we claim to be the part of the same group, then people will come to us too. I think that's what's going on. But the differences are there. They recognize differences. And that's why it's hard to explain why we still say we belong to the same sampradaya when we don't. There's so many differences. Thank you, Prabhuji. One question, please. Uh -huh. You just said that the Tattvavadis, they do devotional service, but it's mixed with karmi and what? The fruity so activities, I... mental speculation. Mental speculations and, and they desire life. mukti. They they desire to be promoted to heavenly planets. So when they're doing devotional service, that means they're serving Krishna, right? Devotees. Yes. Well, serving Krishna's murti. Well, remember, the discussion we've been having today is at a slightly different level. We're talking about Mohanji, Govindji, Gopinaji, which is the mood. Okay. And we said that even though, for example, you go to our temple and you serve Gopinaji, Gopi Vallabhji, Govindji, but our service is not being accepted as Krishna. It's accepted as So it's a very <laughs> subtle thing, so that's why it's maybe hard to understand. But, uh, but there are subtleties that we have to appreciate somehow. Makes sense, Prabhuji. Well, Prabhuji, how do you give context of what you said, mental concoction or mental speculation? Like, what, what, what and uh, I didn't follow. What are they concocting? Well, it's like it may be this, it may be that. The mental speculation basically means that. So I'm not sure, but it could be this. I'm not sure, but it could be that. That's mental speculation. Whereas we go strictly by the Shastras, there's no speculation. It's described, um, um, for example, um, I'm trying to remember a verse that would be in context. Yeah, Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachidananda Vigra. His form is Sachidananda. So we just believe, right? We believe Vyonu Kavantam Arvindalai Taksham Varhadam Samapit. Um, I mean, the light action, something, something. It's describing how Krishna looks. So we believe that. We're not speculating. Right? We distinguish between 400 form of Krishna and 200 form of Krishna. We distinguish between the one who plays flute, one who doesn't play flute, so on and so forth. Everything is described in the scriptures. We go by that. Therefore, there's no speculation. These people is speculate. It could be this, it could be that. And that's the big difference. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to summarize uh, Tattva Vadis. So Tattva Vadis served Krishna for uh, material benefit or uh, just like any other uh, God. That's what we understand. Not from the spiritual perspective or bhakti, as we talk about. So that part is not there. They recognize Krishna is the, uh, Krishna is there. Uh, his form, my like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, that they 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 go to him for any material desire, including mukti, including mukti, dharma, the, the moksh, dharma, kam moksh, you know that follows. Correct. Yes, correct. Okay, so so it it happens also. We see that. Uh, you know, we have uh, Advait and Dwait and, uh, you know, look at the Ramanuja. Just, uh, I think uh, Ramanuja, prior to the Madhvacharya says, uh, I'm just trying to get confused. He said, uh, we are Dwait, like uh, we are different. Then uh, it comes down, we are not uh, exactly different, uh, but uh, same, you know, that, uh, that mix. So as you are mentioning, it is not uh, clear uh, when you say that Sampradaya, it is not 100% how it has been derived. I am trying to get those things. On the way, a lot of purification happened. Clarification has happened till Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He put together, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dwight, Advaita together, everything together. And he says, this is it now. True. So, yeah, that, that explains how Lord Chaitanya came to the conclusion of Achitivheda Veda. 
But yeah. my point was that discipline succession means 100% compliance and it's not. Not true. I understand that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's 9.35, so I'll stop unless there's any other questions. Okay. All right. Mancha Kalpatarum Bhyascha Kripasandhu Bhyavcha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vashwe Bhyo Namo Nama Shilpopat Ki Jai. Thank you all. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, uh, please upload this video as soon as possible. Okay, Ruchira, so we'll do it. <laughs> yes, thank you. Have a very good trip, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. It was a little confusing today, a little more confusing than normal. Yeah, I need to listen again to the video, make notes, sure. and then think, and then read. Sure. It takes time. Yeah. That's right. Shalu, how are you doing? I see you, but I don't see you. <laughs> Put your video Hare on, Krishna. please. For a second. Put your video on. Okay, okay. Just give me a moment. Sure. There you are. How are you? I'm good, good. How are you? Good. Is it getting too complicated for you? No, I think uh, I'm fine, but but I think the, the information is new to me. Yeah, I, it would be. It would be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, feel free to interrupt and say, I did not understand this or that. So, don't be shy. Just ask. Okay, yeah. From the, I think... Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. From the next class, I will be asking, yeah. Okay, sure. By all means, you do that. That's great. Really nice to have you in the class, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Gautam Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare so Krishna. I just wanted to um, ask you, you said they should include one prayer daily. Um, memorize. Memorize uh, and, and include it in your prayer. What is that Prabhu? Which... Just one second. Let me see if I stopped recording or not yet. No, it's still recording. Just one second Prabhu. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>